welcome to this month's Power Panels. My name is Leah Nicole Smith. I am the VP of Education and Performance for Satisfacts and Apartment Ratings, and we have an amazing panel for you today. Um, this panel, the topic is all about the new definition of value, and I'm going to take a little time at the top uh, to discuss how value or the perception thereof has evolved and we have been tracking the top five drivers for value since 2013. I mean when I tell you we have crunched the numbers, we have dug into the data, I mean deep dive, we know what we're talking about and these are going to be the things that you want to focus on for 2020. So as I said during the city, um, the state shout out, your residents really do feel like their money is well spent with you. Uh, before we jump in, I want to introduce our panelists um, and if they will please unmute so you all can say hello to the audience that we have. We have Annette Parker. Hey, Annette. Uh oh, I wonder if she can unmute. Let's see. Hey, Annette, are you there? I'm here. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing just well. And you? Great. Great. Well, Annette is the property manager with White House Landing. Annette, where are you located? Um, we're just north of Nashville. Okay, perfect. Uh, and White House Landing is managed by Buckingham. Uh, we have Belinda. Hey, Belinda. Hello. Belinda Hahn uh, is the general manager with Founders Village. And Belinda, where is Founders Village? We're in Williamsburg, Virginia. Okay, per oh, another Virginia, okay. Uh, and they are managed by Preferred Apartments. And then our third panelist, last but not least, is Tracy Schneeman. Hey, Tracy. Good morning or afternoon at this point. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> depending, depending on where, on where you, you are. are. <laughs> yeah, so Tracy is the senior community manager for two communities, Chapel Springs and River Point. And uh, Tracy, can you tell our group where you are? Uh, both of those communities are in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, great. And they are both managed by Humphrey Management. So um, panelists, feel free to go back on mute and I will be throwing out some questions uh, for you to share as much information as you can with our group in just a bit. So we're going to launch a quick poll. We started the power panels back in January. January was our very first power panel. So I just want to know for those of you who are on the call and you can click right on your screen if this is your first power panel or if you're back for some more great info. No right or wrong answer. Just kind of want to know what your familiarity uh, with the power panels um, are. Okay, so I'm going to wait till I get to about 65% of the vote. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close this out. So um, quite a few of you have been here before. So welcome back. Glad to have you. Those who are not, um, this is your first time. Let me give you a quick rundown of kind of how things go. So with our power panel, we scour um, the communities across the country. Uh, we look at your apartment ratings pages. We look at your satisfact scores if you're a client. Um, and we invite you to participate in the panel. You can also volunteer to be a panelist, and I will tell you more about that at the end of the webinar. But this is a 60-minute webinar. We usually finish with all the content around 45 minutes. And if you're able to stay for Q&A, that's really where the magic happens. Sometimes we will throw a question out to the audience and ask you for your feedback. Uh, I will send out a follow-up email. It will have a recording of the session along with the slides. We always get asked for the slides. The questions box open. As of right now, feel free to just chime in if you have any questions. We do have an exit survey. We would appreciate it if you would rate the session and leave any comments. That feedback is always helpful for us. Uh, you'll get future emails from us that will tell you how to sign up for next month. And the best thing, aside from our panelists, uh, is that we do a $50 giveaway uh, at the end of every session. So I'm going to 
give you the, the goods on how to participate in that. All of these power panel webinars that we do, um, we could not put them on, quite frankly, without help from sponsors. And the sponsor for this session is Pinwheel. And I will say this, as someone who worked on site for multiple years, I would have loved to have this. I would have loved to have the products and the services that Pinwheel uh, provides. So I am gonna show a quick video about Pinwheel so that you all can get a little bit familiar with them and then we will get back into um, the data. Okay, so once again, thanks so much to Pinwheel. You guys check them out. Um, their website is on the screen, but we'll also include a link in our follow-up email. So the top five drivers for value, we're gonna jump into, but I wanna throw this out in case anyone has missed this webinar. We did a webinar last month with Robin Rock. She's an attorney with the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, and she gave some really good advice and tips and things to look out for if you are offering any kind of incentives in exchange for reviews, um, you know, making sure that you are in compliance with the FTC guidelines, what happens if, you're, if you or your company are found to violate those things. So just really giving you a heads up and we'll include that in our follow-up email as well. So after the webinar, we want you to go to either our Facebook page or our Instagram. On Facebook, it is just Satisfax. On Instagram, it is Satisfax Education. Now you're gonna need to follow us, not like the, you know, on Facebook, but follow us on Facebook or follow us on Instagram. And I'm gonna put a post up. It's gonna post within an hour of the end of the webinar. We want you to like the post and in the comment section, put a little coffee cup emoji and the contest you have until five o'clock Eastern today. Um, and if you guys have never checked out starbucksecretmenu.net, there are so many hidden things or secret things that you can order at Starbucks, it's, it'll blow your mind. It's like going down a rabbit hole when you go to that website, but you can use your $50 Starbucks gift card to maybe check out some of these little secret items that they have on their menu that they never tell you about. So currently, year to date, and I pulled these this morning, value, the perception of value is rated a 3.98. And this is for our 2021 Insight Pre-Renewal Survey. And you'll notice that I mentioned um, 2013 is when we started really tracking value. It's currently the highest that it's ever been. And we will take this all day, every day. It's getting very close to being a super superior level score, which is a 4.00, but it has had to, you know, um, it's gone on a journey, you know, value or the perception of has gone on a journey for your residents way back in, um, or excuse me, let me go one back. The year to date is 3.98. Look at where our panelists are right now. They are at a 4.47. 4.34 and Tracy's two communities are 4.51 and 4.5. Now, keep in mind, you may be in 
an area or a market where you're not going to see these super high elevated perceptions of value. You're in New York, you're in Chicago, you're in LA, Seattle, you know, Miami, those high rent markets. What you want to do is be as close to the national average as possible. So if you're at a 3.85 and the av national average is a 3.98, you want to at least be within a tenth of a point of the national average if you are in those higher rent markets. We do know that value is very subjective for a lot of renters, you know, they're just, it's subjective for just consumers in general. But if you are in that higher kind of area, get as close to that national average as you possibly can. So the top five drivers, we've monitored them since 2013. Way back in 2013, we gave Ball State University 1.6 million survey responses, and we asked them to help answer the question, what does it take to get a resident to stay year after year as the rent is increasing? So no, no, not only do we want resident retention, we want to be able to generate revenue. We want to be able to help our bottom line. Well, Ball State took all those survey responses and came back and said, there's only one question on this entire survey that teams need to make sure improves every year. And that is value for the rent paid. Okay, let's stop because as I said, value is very subjective. When I work with our clients, and one of the examples I use is, you know, some people find value in a Honda, some people find value in a Mercedes. It's, you know, it's their perception, it's their opinion, you know, of what they want to spend their money on. So we really needed a little bit more information. What are those questions on the survey that have a stronger pull to perception of value. So if those questions are improving, value will improve. Well, back in 2013, we got stuff back from Ball State like quality of maintenance, the office being responsive and dependable, you know, the nuts and bolts of property management. Over time, we even saw things like the way the community looks or um, safety and security, you know, those, those kinds of things. Well, along comes 2017 and the perception of value completely takes a U-turn. When certain items fall out of the top five, it's not because residents don't think they're important. What your residents are saying is, I will give you a great score for the office. I'll give you a great score for maintenance. You know, I'll give you a five out of five for the way the community looks. But at the end of the day, I just don't think I should have to pay more for those things because that's your job a professional property management company, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to have great maintenance. The office is supposed to be, you know, attentive to the residents. The community is supposed to look great. So again, it's not that they don't appreciate those things, but remember the goal is how do we keep them and how do we keep them at a higher rate year over year? Well, 2017 was really the time where we saw that it became more about the residents and their experience. How does living here make me feel, right? How does living here make me feel? How does living here kind of make me look um, to the outside world? So 2020, if you are a client, this is gonna be old news for you, but for those of you who are not uh, current Satisfax clients, the story in 2020 was, I would be willing to pay more, remember value, for a place that I felt connected. That was sense of community. I'd be willing to pay more for a place that I could vouch for, I could tell other people about. That's would recommend. They're, they were willing to pay more for a community, um, for a home that they had access to everything they paid for. I'm comfortable inside of my home. Social media took a little bit of a drop in 2019, started getting a little stronger relation to value, but they're willing to pay more for a place that really celebrates their residents. You know, they use social media to show off their residents. And neighbors, 
they were willing to pay more to live around people that were respectful, followed the rules, uh, didn't break the rules, kind of looked out for each other. So I'm going to launch um, another poll. This is where we're going to kind of put on our our analyst hats, if you will, because um, that's what we do over here. Want to see how you guys uh, handle kind of the evolution of value as well. This one's going to pop up right on your screen. Um, which 2020 driver do you think fell out of the top five? And it's, you know, again, was it would recommend? Was it the apartment appearance and condition? Was it social media? Was it neighbors? Um, we posed this question online as well and told you all that we would talk about it in just a bit. So I'm at 29% and I am going to wait till we get to about 65% just so we get the majority chiming in. Again, click right on your screen. Which one do you think fell out of the top five for 2021? Okay, I'm at 60%. I'm gonna do my three, two, one countdown. Let's close this out. Okay, so we have a third of you say neighbors. Neighbors fell out of the top five um, for 2021. Okay, we'll, we'll check that out, see if that's where we are. And then the final one, Let's look and see which one dropped out of the top five. So the one that fell out of the top five is would recommend. Neighbors hung in there as, as the number five driver. And these are all in order of importance. So we know would recommend goodbye. It is no longer in the top five. So let's look at the rest of the list. So you guys can kind of look from 2013 um, all the way, you know, through 2019, obviously. And I'm going to ask you which one, we're going to do another poll, which one do you think popped back in to the top five for 2021? So let's launch that poll. We know would recommend no, is no longer in the top five. So which one is back in the top five? Is it the office? Is it the community appearance? Um, events? Is it safety and security? Let's think about residents and their experience during 2020. They all experienced the pandemic. They all experienced lockdown. They all experienced a big shift in their sort of way of life. So what do you guys think is back in terms of importance for 2021? Boy, we got the votes are flying in this time. Perfect, perfect. I'm almost at 65%. We are going to close it out because I just hit 70%. Okay, so we have the majority are saying the office being responsive and dependable is back. And you know what? That makes a lot of sense because of the fact that you all had gone a good span of time, many of you, with offices that your residents could not just open the door, walk into, or get a hold of someone when they needed it. Um, we have events coming in second. That makes sense as well uh, because a lot of events were taken away. And safety and security came in third. So where are we in terms of the new values for 2021? Community events, they are back. They were number six uh, last year, 2020, and they're back in the top five. And you know what happened? Take a look at 2019 and 2020. Events, nowhere in the top five. Remember when things fall out of the top five, it's not because they aren't important, it's residents expect them. They have become basic expectations. Well, hello 2020, here's the pandemic, we have to pull back on our events. So residents now have a renewed sense of value. They have a renewed, you know, this is important to me. I'd be willing to pay more for a, at a community that does these kinds of things. So again, it's all about the resident experience. Um, it's completely about the resident experience. Only one of the top five drivers for 2020 has anything to do with the physical aspects of the community. Everything else is about resident engagement. Everything is about 
uh, all the other four are about resident engagement. So let's kind of get into these top five drivers and why we have the panel that we have today. You will notice that each one of these uh, managers, our panelists, have an exceptional level experience. Their residents have rated them on our annual survey. It's a survey that goes out to every resident at the community the same time, you know, so once a year. And all of the residents collectively for these panelists have rated their experience as an exceptional experience. They're also doing extremely well against the Satisfax Index, our national average, on the drivers for value. And you already saw that they, their perception of value scores were exceptional. So again, I know we have people, and if you dialed in a little late, I preface value by saying that you may not be at an exceptional level. You may not see an exceptional level of value uh, if you are in those truly high rent markets, and that's okay. Just focus on the drivers. Make sure the residents, um, you know, see that that focus is on the drivers, and it will elevate their perception of value. It may never get to that 4.5 range, but if it's growing year over year, you know that your residents have um, an elevated perception each year. So the Satisfax Index for sense of community for 2020 is a 3.93. And I am gonna pose a question to Annette in terms of sense of community. So Annette, your community was rated exceptional in terms of perception of value. I'm just gonna make sure her line is open so we're not having any weird stuff. There we go. Uh, let's see, it was rated exceptional. Can you give our audience any examples of things that you did really during 2020 to make sure that your residents felt connected to the community, you know, what kind of communication, you know, how did you kind of just keep everybody together, um, feeling connected during 2020? Yes, yeah, sure. During the year, I put out newsletters in residents' door. I would tell them anything going on um, so they could be involved. We did food trucks about twice a week. I mean, twice a month, and I would post it. That way they could still get out, but yet they were social distance and just come down, um, and they weren't um, congregating. We had small gatherings on the lawn, like put chairs six feet apart on a Friday night if somebody just wanted to come and sit out and hang out and chat. Um, and for Christmas, I did a 12 days and did things where they could participate, like decorate their door, or we would um, have hot chocolate on the porch and let the guy, um, maintenance guy pick up the trash. We do donuts on the porch, just little things, but where they felt like they were included and we had activity so they didn't feel so isolated. Yeah, it was a tough year for a lot of people, you know, um, number one, sometimes you, you were cut off from your coworkers because now you all had to work from home, or you may have been cut off from family members and had to kind of resort to like Zoom chats and, you know, things like that. Um, and then, you know, just being at home all the time for some people. So you'll, you, you guys will notice that Annette and her, com her community didn't do anything like, you know, out of this world, super expensive, you know, didn't have to do a lot, but the, it's the effort. It's showing that you really do want to make the effort, demonstrating that effort to your residents that you don't want them to feel disconnected where they live, because there was a lot of disconnect happening in other areas of people's lives. So this was a way that, you know, you, you can just give them a little something back. Um, I love the food truck thing. Um, I know of a community, we have a client that they did a food truck week uh, where every day a different food truck was coming out. If that's something that you guys can do in your area, um, that's a great way to help your local businesses and you offer your residents varieties because they may not want that you know, the food truck that you just have for like that Monday or whatever, um, or get them to vote, you know, get your residents to vote. If you can only do one food truck a month or a couple times a month, um, 
put it to a vote, you know, so that the majority kind of wins with your residents. But Annette, you gave some really great examples, and I think they were really simple examples, but important in terms of, you know, really showing residents that, you know, you, you wanted to do your part. Yes, and, and they, they loved it. They would, you know, hurry down to the food truck and buy their dinner, and um, it, they, got, they were able to get out. It was like going out to eat without going out to eat because everything was shut down. Yeah, I think that's great. And I, I'm pretty sure those are going to be things that you'll continue to do, you know, during this year since it was so well received. Yes, I already have one scheduled for a couple of weeks from now. Ooh, who's coming? What kind of food we got? Uh, hot chicken. Patty oh, B's nice. hot chicken. Nice. Yeah. If you all are not familiar with hot chicken, it's a, a Tennessee kind of specialty. Oh, it's some good stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, okay, so my next question is going to be for Tracy. And going back to sense of community, um, you have really great scores as well. So what were some of the things that you all did to just make sure your residents didn't feel a disconnect at home? Uh, during 2020? Yeah, we have um, a little different perspective because um, my communities are both low-income senior housing. So yes. um, so people need a little more um, care <laughs> than, um, than uh, multifamily. Um, we, we did check-in calls every week with everyone in the building. Um, we set up um, a, a buddy system almost like you did with uh, school field trips when you were a kid. Um, so everybody had someone else in the building checking up on them as well. Um, we did um, goodie bags delivered to the doors with activity books and snacks. Um, we um, typically give out calendars every month that have, um, have all of our activities because there's normally so much going on. But when we weren't able to do activities, we started doing calendars with all those crazy high, um, holidays on them, like chocolate chip cookie day and things like that, and then did themed activities based on what was going on. So. Um, we did there's a random act of kindness day so we had um everybody um participate in that um a trivia day so we put out um trivia games and um we had um we worked with some local produce companies um food banks farms um in the area and had produce boxes delivered um for every resident in the building um, on a regular basis so that they wouldn't have to go out and get those sort of things um, we worked with some of the bigger food chains that weren't hit so much with, um, you know, issues from the pandemic, like Chick-fil-A and that sort of thing. And they donated where we could actually deliver stuff door to door and everybody got a hot meal. Um, we did lots of fun games that still made them feel like they were part of a community. Um, we had everybody um, email in um, pictures of themselves when they were younger and we sent them out to everybody in the building and they got to guess who it was. Um, we did a quarantine prices right game. Um, and made sure there were always some sort of prizes. Um, we um, did a, a kind of play on that whole check-in with everybody thing. We did a scavenger hunt thing that was basically virtual, but they didn't have to go out and look for things. So it was like, find somebody in the building who grew up in New England or, and so we have phone lists. Everybody has everybody's number. So they would call people and try to like fill in the boxes and they got to win prizes. Um, just things that that kept them talking to each other, communicating with us so that we knew if there were issues. And that way everybody was still feeling like they weren't missing everyone. Yeah, I think all of that is awesome. And the diversity on this panel is very important as we're talking about perception of value. Um, knowing that you are over two senior communities, um, that could present different, you know, challenges or different, you know, approaches to how you handle things. But I think that the things that you're talking about and what you did for your senior residents can be applied to just about any, you know, any community. Um, you know, it's just, again, showing those efforts, showing those ways that you really want your residents to feel connected. So then I have uh, Belinda. Belinda, we're gonna come to you. So the second driver, the apartment appearance and condition, it's actually a great score for the national average, 4.21. That's a solid superior level score. You all are at a 4.58 or you ended 2020 at a 4.58. Knowing that there was 
probably a period in time, you know, due to COVID-19 protocols, um, maybe like if it was a non-emergency type of request, those are really hard to resolve. Your residents still rated the ap uh, apartment appearance and condition at an exceptional level. Um, how was your team able to adjust uh, to handling service requests during 2020? Like what, what did you all do, you know, just to really make sure that the the requests that you could get done um were completed um, you know how how just brag about your maintenance team well you know i'll have to start out to say you know everybody was really focusing on just doing things that were an emergency and we thought no we just don't want to do that you know we really want to make every effort to do whatever it can you know we didn't want to have to wait till four months down the road and you're bombarded with hundreds of, you know, requests and for people not to be able to uh, get their work requests taken care of. So the main thing I think we did is we really working around their schedules. We had a lot of healthcare workers, you know, that work from home, uh, people homeschooling their children, virtual doctors are on calls from home, you know, just everything like that. So it was basically working around their schedule. And a lot of people were at home a lot of the time. And I would say that for those folks, you know, we, we went the extra step to ask them, you know, is there any time that you're not going to be at home? Um, you know, are, are, you, are you going out to walk? You know, are you coming to the gym for just a little bit? You know, so whatever time we could run in there and fix their leaky faucet, you know, or change their air filter or whatever we could do, you know, that that seemed to really, you know, work for us. And we do have townhomes. So even to the point of if they had something going on in their kitchen on the first level, you know, they could kind of go upstairs from one to one thirty, and we would scoot in there really fast and, you know, take care of their requests. Um, so I think it's just really trying to you know, to work around them. It was a little harder, you know, to do that for sure, but it really kind of paid off. You know, they were just so grateful. You know, of course, everybody had their masks, their booties. You know, we actually even um, have packed masks, you know, we could give to folks, you know. So whatever we could do to try to get that done for them, you know, we just didn't give up. You know, we weren't going to just um, sit back and not do those things. So I think that, that's really what attributed to that. I think, you know, you made a really great point that you could, you know, try to manage through the process and take care of as many requests as you can, or they would stockpile and you would end up, you know, maybe overloaded by the time you, you know, you all decided, okay, we're going to now do non-emergency requests. So I think that is some very creative things that you all did, um, you know, that helped to kind of, again, make sure residents were comfortable in their homes, make sure your service team was comfortable in carrying out, you know, the those requests as well. So well done, I'm definitely well done um, and great uh, examples for our audience. Um, I think Tracy, I think I'm gonna come to you next. Your apartment appearance and condition score, again, for both communities doing really, really well. Um, what about your service team? You know, what are some of the things that, um, that that they got right during 2020. So we um, we uh, went more of the standpoint of um, only health and safety emergency service requests, um, especially with seniors. We definitely wanted to keep that um, keep visitation and contact down to a minimum. And they don't um, obviously during this 2020 did not leave a whole lot. Um, but um, we always made sure um, everyone was in PPE. Uh, if they had a work order in their kitchen, we asked them to wait in their bedroom, that sort of thing, just to keep the distance. Um, the one thing I have to say that really helps us is we have a regular preventative maintenance schedule. Um, we, had, um, we do quarterly preventative maintenance um, and we had just finished our preventative maintenance for the first quarter when everything got shut down last year. So, um, you know, we're very in touch with um, you know, what, what needs the apartments have and maintaining things before there's a problem, which really helps when it, you get in a situation like this um, to, to know that everything is going to still be okay. Um, yeah. And um, I, I think that that, you know, that as a whole, my maintenance staff staying on top of those things really helped. And, um, and our residents couldn't have been more understanding about, um, you know, us, us not taking care of the little things that, um, that, you know, that didn't need to be done. But, um, 
you know, we had a couple of times where things started to get better um, as far as the pandemic was going and we got back in and, and caught up on, um, you know, th those smaller maintenance requests and, um, and, you know, in hopes that things would get back to normal. But I still think, um, you know, doing those quarterly PMs really um, helped us to keep everything going and, and being in good condition. Yeah, and I think the fact that you all were able to complete your preventative maintenance for the quarter prior to everything getting shut down gave you a little bit of breathing room, you know, just a, a little bit because you wouldn't have as many unreported service requests coming in, you know, or, or things that would, again, um, to Belinda's point, have to stockpile on you. Right. Yeah, so that's that's great. Uh, social media, I'm not, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with social media because January we had a power panel all about social media. Uh, but I do want to talk about a couple of things because I did check you all out on social media. I found some things that I thought were really interesting um, for Belinda and also Annette. So Belinda, can you tell our group um, about your motivation Monday? Well, let's see. I'm probably, I mean, I, I'm okay at this, but we have one of the girls in our office that's really good. So I have to give the credit to her, but we kind of have a social media director and we're on calls um, every two weeks. And uh, there's a group of us, I'd say this whole, um, Holly Kylie's the area vice president. So our whole group is there and everybody kind of, you know, bounces off these ideas, but he has, um, every day is something, Monday, Motivational Monday, Trivia Tuesday, Win It Wednesday, Foodie Friday. So we have, you know, some guidelines like that, you know, and of course we can do obviously way more than that, um, you know, on the side, post residence pictures and pets and things like that. So, you know, we're just really up there trying to get our name out there. So I, I actually was just on um, Instagram yesterday and one of the things, you know, I checked out all the communities and our communities in our little area. I mean, they have very few followings. I mean, we have about 1,500. The highest in our company has like 2,800 followers. So, wow. that's, so that's where we're going. So we're just posting a lot of things, you know, great things that are going on in the area. You have My City Monday, you know, what's going on in Williamsburg or Richmond or somewhere close by this week. So Motivational Monday was one of our original topics that we had. So we pretty much have something every day. So um, that, that's helping to get folks involved. And we have some, we're trying to also partner with, you know, some of the local businesses, the restaurants and things like that, you know, for um, give $10, $10 gift cards for them. So just kind of promote them as well, uh, because, you know, a lot of those companies out there are, are suffering. Um, we do a lot of things like duck donuts, you know, we're doing that in the morning and then you win a gift card, you know, if you tell us your favorite donut. So it's really become pretty fun. At first I was kind of dreading it, you know, like one more thing on my list, but actually <laughs> it's not like, it's not like that. You know, I'm like, I get here first thing in the morning and I'm going to follow Panera Bread or duck donuts or the coffee house, you know, that's like a part of my routine now. So um, it's worked out. It's been fun and it's working out to our benefit. Yeah, I, you know what? I actually follow your community now because of your Motivation Monday. Because oh, I know when I, when I wake up on a Monday, I'm going to probably need to go to your page to get a little bit of, you know, positive mojo happening uh, while I drink my coffee. But yes, I started following you all because of your Motivation Monday. So I thought I thought it was amazing. Uh, Annette, I spied on your Facebook page. Um, you just put out a normal, like ice morning, you know, please everybody be careful. If you have to go outside, they've been salted, but they're slippery, you know, just kind of giving everyone a heads up. And you actually had a resident come back with almost like a review you know, of you and how fantastic um, you you are doing. So how did that make you feel when you saw this on your Facebook page? Of course, it made me feel good. I love our community and I love our little residents. Um, I want them to feel safe. I want them to be proud to call this home. And um, yeah, it makes you feel good. And I guess they do, you know, read the post. I post if we have bad weather coming or, different things like um, for St. Patty's Day, I posted 
where I'd hid two gold coins and whoever found them brought them in and I had gift cards. And for Easter, I've got golden eggs I'm gonna hide. Just try to, you know, let them feel connected um, as well. Yeah, and I think that it helps to get out, you know, when you have those little scavenger hunts or you have those little, you know, find it here kind of things, you do give residents an excuse to get out, get some fresh air. So um, I mentioned that we did have a January power panel all about social media. Um, the recording is available on our website. Um, we'll make sure that you all have that information if you don't go to our education page directly on the website. But there, I mean, it's a full hour, a full hour of really great examples, um, things that you can do, how you can work it into your day. Uh, to Belinda's point, you know, oh, one more thing that, you know, that's the initial thought, one more thing that I have on my plate. But it really is doable if you go about it, um, you know, in a sort of strategic kind of way. So we'll make sure that you all uh, are connected to that webinar in case you missed it. And then we have community events. Remember, your residents have missed these events. And Belinda, Annette have given some great examples, Tracy as well, of things that they have done at their communities to really help your residents, you know, feel um, like you, like, yeah, we can still do these things. We just have to do them in a different way. So Tracy, do you have any advice um, for the audience on how to get your residents to participate in events. And I know you're at a, you know, you're at a senior community, so you may have residents that, you know, are, they actually look forward to it, but do you do anything to really like, you know, get them engaged with coming out to the events? So yeah, I, I'm, I am blessed in the sense that in senior communities, you get a lot more turnout than you do in multifamily. <laughs> um, I, you know, the easy things have always been, you know, food and giveaways are the things that get people to come. Um, but it's, those are always easy. But um, I think that you, um, especially new residents, I think um, you need to personally invite people. I don't ever um, just hang up a sign or put it on the calendar and hope people show up. Everybody gets a personal invitation to whatever events we have going on. Um, new residents um, get phone calls. Um, I want to make sure that new residents feel like they're included and that you know, that they want to come. And I also always have um, residents that have lived here for a long time, you know, the joiners, the people that always want to participate or do always come to everything that you have. Um, they, um, I also have them go and invite the new residents because sometimes when you have someone to come with, it makes you more excited to come. Um, and anybody that brings a, a neighbor with them um, to the event, that's people that don't normally come, um, they get entered in a drawing when I have events. Um, and then, um, and then for seniors especially, I'm, I'm sure it's multifamily too, but just in a different way. Um, we always have some kind of a game um, that at the door, um, and it's, it's silly things like um, if you come to the event and I can't tell you what apartment number you live in when you get there, then you get entered into a drawing to win a prize. Um, I think people often just, you know, need motivation to come and having someone that wants them to be there. Um, I think they feel like when I call them and say, hey, this is what we're doing on Friday, we'd really like you to come, it, it you know, makes them like, oh, well, they're looking for me. It's not just whether or not I show up. Yeah, you know, I, the one thing, and you said a lot of great things, but the main thing I just took away from that is that you personally call your new residents to invite them. Um, you know, I, as a new resident, I don't know anyone here. I, you know, I just moved and maybe I'm a little hesitant to come out to the event, but I know the manager, I know the leasing associate, I know, you know, the person that helped me move in on move-in day. So maybe it doesn't necessarily even have to come from the manager. Maybe for those of you who are listening, you know, maybe you can task that with your leasing associate. So you lease to Leah. For the very first event, you should contact Leah and personally invite her for her first event at the community. And that is that could be part of the leasing process, you know, part of the move-in process that I am going to make that personal contact. I absolutely love that idea, Tracy. Thank you so much for sharing that um, with us, that personal invitation. Um, oh, I have one more, one more. Belinda, for you. 
we know that you do really, really unique events. How do you get your residents to participate, to want to come to the events? Well, I think one thing that we were very successful with is we did um, Why Cook Wednesday, and we will continue to do that. We actually have a, a um, function on April 14th, but we kind of kept with that theme, you know, to, to kind of brand us. I mean, even prospects would come in and say, oh, I hear you guys do Why Cook Wednesday. I said, well, we don't do it every Wednesday, but, you know, we do it at least once a month, and then, you know, we encourage people to bring their friends. I mean, when we do a function, we have a lot of food, you know, and I kind of do that myself in my personal life. I'd rather have more food than not enough, you know, so we, we encourage them to invite their friends. Of course, we send out an email blast, a text blast, you know, pretty much everything that we could do. And, you know, you start getting the regulars coming and bring their friends and, you know, it just works out really well. So, um, of course, we have done a few things in the last six months, and we did this past um, Saturday a duck donut, and it, it worked out okay. The weather wasn't that great because um, usually they can sit outside and still social distance or inside. There's a lot of space for them to go. So, honestly, we in the office are looking forward to trying to get this back to, to normal again. You know, we've opened up the pool uh, 20, I mean, six o'clock to nine, the, the fitness center 24 hours, because everybody's doing exactly what they need to do. So I think really word of mouth, inviting their friends. Um, we, we have a huge turnout pretty much for everything we do. Oh, that's fantastic. I think too, um, to your point, everyone is ready to get back to pre-COVID. You know, it's we're, we're all ready to get back to that. Neighbors and, and uh, operators alike in the industry. So Annette, your neighbor score, unbelievable and with 2020 you know a lot of residents had to work from home school from home just kind of be in and around each other much more in 2020 how are you able to maintain such a high score because your score actually went up year over year from 2019 um to 2020 it was higher in 2020 so how did you how are you able to make sure that you know your residents are following the guidelines i don't want to say getting along with each other but what's the environment like uh, um, at your community in terms of neighbor to neighbor um we're all like they're all like big families the neighbors i have a lot of elderly and retired so they watch out after the neighbors they know when they leave and when they come back <laughs> But um, it was a tough year for everyone. Our our city actually came together and they would deliver meals to people that were um, invalid or disabled that really needed, did not have a way to have hot meals. They would deliver it to me and I would deliver it to their doors. Um, our Buckingham Foundation even donated to our city for this cause. At different times, I did things like we for school kids even though they were home they still needed supplies and stores were you know um limited so we stuffed the backpacks and on a friday night had a uh personal pizza pickup and gave them the school supplies they would need from home uh i did craft bags on their door just things to have them a break from their school and I made sure to have open communication with the residents. I let them know I was here no matter you know what time they could call. If they needed something from the store, some of them don't drive, I'd go pick it up and leave it at their door. I just didn't want them to feel isolated. And other neighbors would call and check on other neighbors. They would call me at times and say, I can't get a hold of this lady or they need this. And we just all took care of each other. Yeah, I think um, 2020 really was a year that you saw residents and their management teams coming together. Um, I was a little surprised, not a lot, but I was a little surprised that every single one of our Satisfact surveys, the average scores improved in 2020, like everything improved. And I think it was, it's a combination of 
a, a, a few things. Management companies really making the effort, making smart decisions, and then residents cutting you guys a break, you know, like understanding, I get why I can't use the fitness center. I get why there are no events. I'm not going to give them a one on a survey for community events because they're not doing them. You know, like I, 2020 was really that year where um, everyone kind of joined together and management teams did the best jobs they could possibly do. And residents, you know, were probably more flexible and understanding in 2020 than they have been in years prior. So kudos to all of the panelists um, for a job well done in 2020. I'm sure you're going to be doing even better things uh, in 2021. So we're going to open up the questions box. If you all have any questions, feel free to fire away while I I do the final takeaways of the session. So remember, residents are willing to reward for the basics. They'll give a five for maintenance. They'll give a five for how your community looks. They just don't feel like they should have to pay more for that, right? But when the basics are not going well, when maintenance is super slow or the community doesn't look great, that will detract, that will sabotage the perception of value. So even if something is not a top five driver, it's not a top dri five driver because that's an expectation. But if those expectations are not being met, they will sabotage value. And value is created way beyond the dollar amount. As we heard from our panelists, they are at different communities around the country. You know, they some senior communities, families, some uh, residents are retired, some are schooling from home, some are working from home. It's really, it goes beyond that actual dollar amount of what they're paying because it's a perception of where that money is going and value for residents in 2021 it is about their experience it is all about them i think 2021 is the year of the resident it is all about them and how we can make sure that not only are we riding the ship coming out of 2020 but really making those concerted efforts that hey you know, we're gonna make sure that you really feel like things are going well and your money's well spent. If you miss the FTC webinar, I talked about this at the beginning of the uh, session. Uh, we did a webinar with the attorney from the FTC talking about incentivized and deceptive online reviews. Uh, definitely check out that recording to make sure you're in compliance. If you would like to be a panelist, as I said, we scout you all out. We look at your scores. We look at your apartment ratings pages. We look at your social media. But if you think you have a great story to tell or someone at your community, um, we're going to send a link in the follow-up email. You can nominate yourself or you can nominate an on-site team member. This person, the panelist, needs to work on-site. That's what um, where we get the expertise. You can also suggest future topics if there's anything that you all would like to hear of and learn a little bit more about. And I'm getting ready to open up the questions. I think we have a couple. But if you want to win that $50 Starbucks gift card after the webinar, within an hour, um, go to our Facebook or our Satisfacts, uh, our Satisfacts Facebook page or Instagram, Satisfacts Education. You want to follow us on either page. Find the post that I'm going to put up. It's going to have the session was rated a 4.1. The session was rated a 3.2. I don't know. Uh, we want you to like that post and comment with a coffee emoji. And then uh, you have until 5 o'clock Eastern today to get those entries. And I am going to announce the winner tomorrow. Ooh, there's some good questions. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so this is, oh, well, we kind of already answered this, Corey. Uh, Corey asked, how do you get residents to participate? We have poor participation. I really think, like I said, um, the best idea I heard was that personal recommendation. Um, is sense of community at the top in all of the years? Yes, 
that is one thing that has never changed. Sense of community has always been the number one driver since 2013. And we're not even talking a close first and second. There is always a very large gap between the number one and the number two driver. I will say though, for this analysis, 2021, that gap is shortening a little bit um, because in 2020, you had residents who were spending more time in their home, right? They're in an, in their apartment homes more. They're, you know, that's has become more valuable to them, but it has not yet trumped uh, the expectation. It hasn't trumped the expectation uh, or the connection. Let's see. Uh, Pascal is talking about the food trucks. They're still doing the food trucks and they do them daily, Monday to Friday, 11 to two and five to eight. They're in Seattle. So just kind of give you guys a perspective. Uh, let's see, poor participation. We had that question. Oh, this is a great one. And I'm gonna open it up to all of the panelists and you guys feel free to chime in. While you're caring for your residents, how do you also make sure that your team is feeling good and positive too? Um, do the events, the fun surprises, did you guys do anything for your teams just to you know, really make sure that they're feeling positive um, as well? Whoever wants to jump in, feel free. I have a small, this is Annette, I have a small community. It's just myself and a maintenance supervisor but at times i would um also give him a gift card for lunch or just let him to let him know he was appreciated yeah it's a, it's a tough year it's a very tough year um it was a very tough year belinda tracy you guys have anything that uh, you all did for your teams uh, this is Tracy. We also did, um, we're used to having time where we have lunches together or things like that. And obviously, um, most leasing offices don't leave that kind of space for you to be a part. Um, so we um, tried at least once a month to um, go to like a local area park or something. I'd order lunch and we'd have it there and just all be spread out and sit outside and just, um, you know, that way we could still have those, that, those team moments. Oh, I like that. How large is your team? Uh, Annette um, just mentioned she's a team of two. How large is your team? Well, between the two communities, I have eight people, and we would always do it together. That way we could, um, you know, support one another. Yeah, I think that's great. Belinda, anything? Um, yeah, our company is great. So PAC actually did a service week for the maintenance guys, and there were all types of things. A lot of, they got a little box of different swags, you know, coffee mugs t-shirts they sent them one day um what's it you know the, the bacon wrap filet steaks for them um we had a little call they were able to go home a couple of a couple of hours early so we've kind of been doing things along that line all the time you know we like to grill out a lot so we would go get chicken and, and pretty much we make pasta salad so just anything you know to um you know, everybody was still coming to work, of course, you know, um, but any anything like that, just for us to take a little break, you know, because people were calling and, you know, we were trying to, we did a happy inspector where we have to kind of clean the property a couple of times a day. So there was a lot going on and still kind of is, but, um, you know, I think everybody feels a little bit more comfortable and, uh, you know, can see the light at the end of the road now. So we, we, we made it through it. Yeah, I think we all we all are like, there's that light. I see it. It's it's coming. We're getting closer to it. Uh, so everyone, as we start to wrap up, uh, let's see. Oh, I think we have um, a comment. Uh, someone's corporate office did several road shows to all properties uh, to thank the staff for working the front line during the pandemic. Ooh, and they handed out a hundred bucks to them as a thank you. Nice. That's a great, um, a great, great comment. And that's coming from the company is Carter Haston. Hey, Sharice. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, okay. So as we start to wrap up, uh, first, Thank you so much, Annette, Belinda, and Tracy for sharing your stories, for giving our team, our um, audience some things. Oh, I'm sorry, Sharice, it's Paragon. 
I'm thinking of two Sharices. My my apologies. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a lot of really great information. Um, and if you all would like to sign up for the next power panel, it is going to be held uh, next month. We are currently fishing around for a really good topic, but you can save the date, put a pin in the date, April 15th, uh, same time, 12 o'clock Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we hope you all will come back. And as you exit uh, the webinar, please don't forget to do our exit survey. We would love to feature your comments on our social media. And thanks again for joining everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your week and a great weekend as well. And we will be in touch shortly. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.